Welcome back to the Lance Walnow's Bible study. I, we don't even have a name for this. It's not the Lance Walnow show, but it's actually the Lance Walnow's world's most unusual Bible study. That's how I put it, because we don't really go into the same subjects that everybody else talks about. I like to go into what what uh, I'm learning, and so but that gives a sense of it being alive and fresh. I can always teach what I already know. That's important. These broadcasts, I like to teach on what God is saying that's in the Word, so it has a kind of a prophetic uh, relevance to it. We're going to continue on from last week with our teacher, Perry Gaspar. Perry, you were talking about the year 5783. We're coming to Rosh Hashanah. This is very exciting. We have a very prophetic audience, and he's talking about the significance of that three, the, um, the gimel, the rising camel. What does that mean? But now, my wife, as she walked through the studio, uh, brought a holy disruption to my plans for the second broadcast. She said, what about his wife? Because my wife's thinking about the wife. So now Thank Wanda uh, Gaspar is now joining us. Wanda, welcome to Thank the you. Bible study. Thank you. The most unusual Bible study. Thank you, Annabelle. And uh, thanks to Annabelle, who left, I, I suspect. She's around. Yeah, okay, she's around somewhere. All right, so God lives in the place of eternity. And for, the, for, for time periods, that's past, present, and future. And somehow, if we're seated with him in heavenly places, then we have access to that limitless perspective of something past that's present, something present that's future. And so in a sense, we can, we can detach ourselves from anxiety because there are certain things that are already settled in heaven. And for us, it's more discerning what the Father's doing than trying to arm wrestle something into manifestation. But I want to know more about the Gimel, that, that, because we're in the 5783. Three is the year where it's being inaugurated in September 25th, 26th, with Rosh Hashanah. What else does that look like, Perry? Well, uh, I went on a study of studying the letter Gimel and looked at all the places, the words used in the, in the Bible that begins with the Gimel. And then or sometimes the gimel is an is a important part of the word. And so I laid all this out for the last, whatever, month or six weeks now, and then prayed over <laughs> which ones are prophetic for now okay, versus what is just a true and, you know, for years, you know, this is just a, a truth of God. So I was praying many, many hours over these and which ones to bring forth. And, and one of the things that uh, is beginning with the gimel is the word gala which means to reveal or to uncover. This is the year things are going to be revealed or uncovered. If we have time, I'll talk about that later, but this is what God does. He will not do anything on the earth, but that he, Galah, opens it and covers it to the prophets. So we're entering into a prophetic timeline of the last days. And I've been telling the people in our Zoom church is that every single one of you need to learn how to be prophetic and to see the visions, and hear the leading and the promptings, and to be open to angelic manifestations and portals being open, because every one of us are given a garden, a family, a circle of influence, a job, a region, a nation, whatever your, however far your authority reaches, and you need a prophetic direction, or else you're going to get skewed, you're going to get out of boundaries, you're going to get messed up. Well, we also left off talking last time about the word gamal, gemul. They're all sounding the same. They're all with the gimel and the mem and the lamath with different other letters in between. And I told you that it was a double-sided word. On one hand, it means to be blessed and rewarded, gemul, and God is rewarding his children. Psalms 103, verse 2, forget not all his gemul, his benefits, who blesses you, who heals you, who, who, who fills your mouth with tav, the goodness of the Lord. But it also means punishment, same word, punishment, and vengeance towards his adversaries. Isaiah 59 talks about a time that they lived in in the time of Isaiah. They lived it in the time of Jesus. And then many times, this is the key bar, what was past, is present, is future, and we're living in it now, certainly. When judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, and truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. And where is this? In the Isaiah 59, 14. Now here's verse 15. Yea, truth falleth, and he that departs from evil maketh himself a prey. 
That certainly describes what we're walking in now, isn't it, Lance? Yeah. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. There was no retribution, no fair play, no completion to this. So he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Mapagia comes from the root word paga, which is pay, gimel, ayin. So here we are with the pay, 80, Gimel, the year, 83, and add to that the fountain, the word Ayin. He said he wondered that there was no man that could intercede and take care of this inequity that's going in the, in the, in the world where good is called evil and evil is called good. And people that are righteous are called fascists and anarchists. Man cannot fix this. So God fixed it himself. His own arm brought salvation his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate, a helmet of salvation, garments of vengeance, and, and then when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will rise up a standard. All of that is in what I'm fixing to tell you now in verse 18. In this time, and I believe this is specific to the year 5783, we're going to begin to see, verse 18, according to their deeds is the Hebrew gemula their dealings, how they have dealt with man, how they have been in their job, whether it's politics or as business, a CEO, how they've been in as a marriage, as a husband or wife, according to your deeds, accordingly he will repay them, is the Hebrew word shalam, not shalom, but shalam, which literally means to make restitution, to compensate to complete, to finish, to bring to an end, to make whole or good. God, I believe, is going to begin, and we're going to see it. He is completing and bringing to an end all of these questions we've been having, Lance, about why, why doesn't God do something? Why is it this exposed? Why is this person still in a, under the reins of authority? What's going on? What God waiting for? Well, I'm telling you, June showed us what he's waiting for. The time is now when he overturned Roe Ro v. Wade. And now I'm telling you the Word of God, I believe, is saying, Fury to his adversaries, recompense as gimel to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. He will pay them their due. He's going to reward them according to their actions of turning evil good and forcing us, if we don't agree with evil, to shut up and to go away and be quiet, making us bow our knee. If this is a year of God dealing fully with his children for the blessing, but also doing great punishment with his enemies. When I was reading this, the Spirit began to say to me that lawsuits are going to be settled in this year, in the 5783 year that goes from 2022 in a few days through 2023, especially 2023. Lawsuits are going to be settled. Investigations are finally going to yield prosecutions and that people will begin to pay for what they have done. I believe, Lance, that this is the time that we're entering into where God is going to begin to cause these things to come to pass. This is the same thing that happened whenever um, Isaiah was dealing with the prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth in 1 Kings, 2 Kings 17, or 1 Kings 17. I'm looking for it in my notes. i got so many notes. I'm skipping around. Um, so he called the 450 prophets of Baal, and he called the 400, 400 prophets of the grove, the Asherah, the Ashtaroth, that was the sexual demon that called, had the male prostitutes and the women prostitutes that could turn men into women and women into men, that you know the whole woke uh, sexual confusion, what's your pronoun of the day, you can go here, there, and change it. That spirit is in America today. Well, Elijah, the prophet, had to deal with that, and when he dealt with it, he dealt with it in a way that the prophets were so frustrated and so beside themselves, listen to this, because I believe this is indicative of this next year, the powers of darkness they were depending on to keep them in power and to have their influence and their sway, the demonic soul ties over people, wasn't working. For half a day, they're sitting there and they're doing the same thing they've always done and it wasn't working and they're saying why. And they were so frustrated, Elijah literally began to make fun of them, that they jumped on top of their altar and the Bible says they began to cut themselves with knives and swords. They began to cut themselves and one another. I'm believing that this next 12-month cycle, the beginning of this new Shemitah, that we're going to begin to see the people 
that have been controlled more than others by the kingdom of darkness, and it's going to be exposed how the sausage has been made all along. And, and once they lose their power and their strength, they're going to turn on one another and be exposed for the, the portals to the realm of darkness that they, yeah, we know they do. And been. let me, uh, something, uh, Wanda, that you and I were kind of like, we didn't even fully talk about it, but I can tell you, you get it. I, uh, I think that when we hear words like this, and it speaks like this, remember, once again, for the audience, this is 5783, Perry has taken the word gimel, and he's, he's extrapolating after praying over that, the verses where that word gimel is, to see which ones apply to this season, and these are specifically things that are going to be, that are pertinent to this season. Even in Isaiah, ironically, uh, he will recompense his enemies. The coastlands will he fully repay. That's right. an interesting. Right. Ironically, it is in America. It's the coastal elites. That's exactly. what they're, they're called. Right. It's the L.A., Washington, New York corridors that are manipulating the American game right now, financially and media-wise, with politics. But uh, so, but we should temper our expectations because everything doesn't get settled within 12 months. Well, how, does, how do we work out the meaning of these words, uh, Wanda, so that we can expect something but, not, but not, not unrealistically look at the year? Well, the way I see it is these are phases. It's, um, it, it's not black and white. Oh, today we're this and tomorrow we're this. It's, it's a gradual phase that we move into. It's a season, if you will. But it goes back to the whole key bar time thing. We were saying just last Sunday, uh, I felt compelled to really pay attention to how often I'm using time words and confining myself by the Give vocabulary. Give me an example of that. What do you mean by that? Oh, I don't have time for this, or okay. I'm running late for that. It, it doesn't, I'm not talking about right. being squirrely. If you give your word, you're going to be at an appointment at two o'clock, obviously. It be is, there. But it's limiting yourself to time as you think you've got it. And it Correct. puts pressure on you and agitation, right. anxiety, and worry. Right. It creates a state that you really can't flow in the spirit when you're agitated or you have anxiety. It's interesting in the first segment, you mentioned anxiety. I think often it's that time constraint that creates the anxiety for Oh, totally. The, so, illusion, the illusion of it. Correct. When you're waiting, when you're standing in the, uh, in the wings and you're waiting to go out, I can't tell you how many times I had no idea what I was going to say. I'd done my due diligence. I had prayed. I had studied. I had pages of notes, but I couldn't put it together. So, but that, I got to be out there at 11 a.m. Time, 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 time. But as soon as I stepped out, all of that left. And the, the moment I stepped into his presence, into eternity, in the physical world, all of that worry and anxiety was gone in a flash, and the peace of God overtakes you, and you open your mouth, and the Lord just begins to talk through your mouth. Right, right. So somewhere in the late part of 2019, I really got impressed. You know, it kind of goes back to some of my roots in the Word and Faith uh, movement, to watch what you say. Be careful of your speech. But it was really an urgency. Pay attention. And it was interesting because it was that decade of pay. So I, I, it was no coincidence. But when we started recently talking about Kibar and time, I realized that I'm getting even more granular in my speech, being even more careful to choose my words carefully because we create the world and space around us by what comes out of, our, out of our mouth. I mean, most of the problems we deal with, if we're, if we're really honest, it's some result of some stupid thing we said, you know, <laughs> five minutes ago or five days ago. That's, that's the reality. I mean, certainly there is the demonic part of the world, but, but why? We yield, we, yield to we yield to it. I mean, we either agree with God or that other part of the spirit realm. But getting back to your original question you were talking about, um, we enter phases, and we get, I mean, I equally got discouraged by a lot of things that were presented very black and white in the last few years. Right. And, and, and there was a temptation to become very discouraged. Yeah, we stopped listening to certain people. Because yeah, I just wanted. Their words just fell like, the rah. But it doesn't mean what they were saying wasn't true or accurate. It meant it's a phase, it's a season, and I think it's just, um, 
You might even say it's like doors that are being opened up in the spirit realm. Things we're now being given access to that maybe we didn't previously have access to. Therefore, we're going to have the benefit of these open doors in the spirit. And gradually things take place. You use the example of families getting born again and a lot of words saying this is when your family's coming. Oh, yeah. Well, well, and to be clear, so we're talking about, you know, the 5781, 5782, 5783. Exactly. And every year, Chuck Pierce and, and, and Bob Jones used to do this before. Yeah, Chuck, yeah. too. And I got into this by accident because Chuck could not make it to a Rosh Hashanah <laughs> Jerusalem conference. The year, and I, I was already stressed out. It was 2016, and it was the year of the election. And, um, and, and so I remember that uh, I was flying out of Jerusalem. I got a call from Dave Hess saying, Lance, I need a favor from you. Before you go, we do one more meeting. And I was like spent. I did five days of meetings and Trump stuff was wearing me out. And uh, I said, well, uh, when is it? He goes, it's the, it's the evening meeting. It's going to be a lot of expectation. We've got the biggest crowd and Chuck can't make it. I said, darn. All right, all right, but you know, he said, just, 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 can you do it? I said, yeah. Typical, like, almost, he's almost Jewish this way. He negotiated me. Then he said, by the way, after I said I'd do it, the people will be expecting an analysis of the Hebraic meaning of the year prophetically. I said, I don't do that. Chuck does that. Uh, Bob Jones does that. He said, well, I'm just saying everyone will be expecting it. So you do what you want to do, but that's what they want to hear. I thought, I can't believe you're doing this to me. Don't you talk about being stretched? It was the year 5777. Wow. And uh, that was the year Trump was running for office. And I get on my knees at the Mount Zion Hotel. I said, Lord, this isn't my shtick. I don't do this. Evidently, I'm going to have to do it. So uh, what is this? So I, I do a dumb thing. I'm just going Google in Hebrew, you know, on the, on the, um, on the 5777. And it's the, it's the word for a saiyan. And it's the word, the seven is a word for a crowned uh, sword. It's a sword oh, with Zayin, a crown on it. The seventh Zayin, Hebrew letter, yeah, Zayin. Zayin, yeah. And it's a crown with a sword. And I hear the Lord say to me, you are, you are entering the season of the clashing of swords. Wow. Right. And angels and principalities will collide over whose version of reality will be manifest on the earth. Oh my goodness. There are two contending narratives. One is true, one is false, and the false will seek to become true, and the true must displace the false. And it's, I knew right then, it was the, I knew that Trump was going to be one of the, his whole mouth was half the battle. It's going to be the clashing of swords. So I gave that message, and ever since then, I've, uh, I've respected well, the, let me, the teaching let me, let me on, interrupt you. All you did was look at one of the 22 Hebrew letters and this wealth of revelation, this, this prophetic revelation just exploded inside of your heart. One of those living, living letters. She actually had a vision about the letters and how alive they are. I don't know if you want to tell it. Well, I mean, well, I, 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 I want to hear that, but I just, you just made me think of something. So I want to say it before I forget. Lou Engel and I meet. He says, you know, he didn't even know what, I, what I'd done. He said, my son heard the Lord uh, speak to him, and he, he told him that this, this, this next season we're entering is going to be the season, and he's hunching back and forth, the season of the clashing of swords. He heard him in the spirit, and I thought, the same language I heard in Jerusalem, the season of the clashing of swords, a, a, a battle of utterance with pay yeah. being the mouth. So, But these words, these numbers, and these, these Hebrew idioms are alive. Now, Wanda, you know that they're alive because you had a vision. Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. I just, in, in the night, in my sleep, I happened to sleep with the mask, and I started seeing the letters in front of me move and dance and sway. Sounds kind of odd. I, I actually touched my face, because I'm like, how am I seeing this? But I had my mask on with my eyes open, and yet I could see them. The point is, that I wasn't looking at the curtains being moved by the fan. I, I have a blackout mask, and yet I can see Hebrew letters dancing in front of me. Wow. And I just had a sense that they carry revelation, that they're alive, just what Perry's saying. 
I mean, I'm not suggesting everybody start bowing down to the Hebrew letters and worshiping No, them. no, no, but it's funny you say that because if you look at the cover of the last book I wrote, we knew that the, the, these books in particular are going to be speaking to us. There'll, be, there'll right. be books that are open for certain seasons. That's right. It's the Cyrus books. It's the books that would be the post-exile. Rest. It's when Cyrus says, we go back and rebuild. It's when you get your temple rebuilt, which mm-hmm. is the church getting rebuilt. It's when your walls and your gates are getting reoccupied, which is this whole retribution. is about God dealing with our enemies that have decimated our walls and our gates. And it's about Esther. It's also organized political persecution, as well as it's about uh, Malachi, Haggai, and uh, Ezra, and and, uh, Zechariah. Those are the books of the exile, of coming back and rebuilding the land. And what I want, what I want everyone to think about, and on the cover of the magazine of the book, uh, the 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 artist came back and put Hebrew letters that were that were on fire in various phases wow. of, of illumination. Wow. Because those books are being opened. Yes. For those that will go in, you'll start to see something about this thing is opening up for us. It is, yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't want to go any further without forget, with, and, and forget this. I should have said this earlier. We're doing something new. We're doing these Bible studies for you guys and because we believe that we need to have a fresh revelation of the Word of God. There is a kind of a famine of sorts that is out there. And I think it's a famine for revelation knowledge, real word birth revelation. And uh, there's, there's a contest for that real birth of, of the spirit happening in the words that God wants to speak to us. And so you want to go to lancewalnut.com forward slash partner. You can partner with us because our whole program, news and Bible, is about discerning the world that's happening right now through the filter of what God says in the Scripture and accurately, prophetically discerning what is happening now based upon the Scriptures that God has given us. And I believe that we've done a very a faithful job of doing that. We were able to track what would happen in this uh, election challenge that took place, and uh, I, we predicted that there would be a blackout, a news blackout. The ballots would be the issue. I predicted three out of five of the states where there was going to be ballot harvesting. And we're in that warfare right now. Was We call it God's chaos president because the chaos is over. How America is going to see its way through this crisis, which is why I say partner with us because we're getting this message out. And as you partner with us, you partner with the anointing that will bring clarity to you as we're cutting our way through the fog of world events and seeing where the Father's going. So, Perry, you're saying that we're in a period where we're coming in a couple, it might be two weeks. We're going to be at the Rosh Hashanah. There'll be a new era inaugurated. I quoted from Haggai chapter 2, like verse, uh, what was it, 18? Uh, yeah, 218, which says that um, on the ninth month, on the 24th day, I will begin to reverse the situation. And that was a literal word to the Jews then. Be a different ninth month than ours, but. The Lord seems to be speaking that ninth month, 24th day, because you're right there in Rosh Hashanah, 25th day. And you think that there's going to be a gimel or a rising camel. Once again, what does the rising camel symbolize in its, in its, in its most important essence for our audience? Well, if you look at a chart of the Hebrew letters, there's Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Daleth, which means door, and then He, which is Revelation. And they're all facing the same direction. And so the gimel, the rising camel, which is loaded with the blessings and the covenant of God, and it uh, enables you to go places you can go on your own, uh, transition, you're going to be stepping to things you've never walked in before, but you're headed towards the dollar, which is the door. Whoa. You're headed towards, and the other side and of the door. And beyond the door is revelation. Is revel- the, the re- I don't, I don't understand. Revelation. What, what do you mean the door? You're headed for the door. What does that mean? Why? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So how many doors are there? There's an infinite number of doors. You call it portal, you call it an opening, you call it a season, but actual doors. Well, Jacob's door. Wait, wait, but I just want to clarify. Are you saying that the number three, four, and five is going to be like camel and then door? Or is that, gimel, that what you're talking about? Gimel, yeah. I just Daleth, want to make sure I'm clear in my head what we're talking about. Gimel, okay. Daleth, hey. Oh, wow. The fourth letter is Daleth, and the symbol for Daleth is it door. Is a, the fifth letter is hey, and that's revelation. 
So he's saying we go from the camel through the door to Revelation. Let, but isn't this always going to be those uh, those nine numbers are always going to be in the, the the tail end of the four four digits? Right? Well, Zion is the seventh. So in, in four more years, so, we'll be to the Zion so, again. But in a sense, this Kimar. is like this is almost like that stairway. Kimar. Yes. A spiral stairway where it repeats itself over Kibar. and over again. Kibar. And we've been since we've opened our eyes, as the Lord's opened our eyes for the last three years. We see it literally every week. We see somewhere it's happening, the Word of God uh, in our own personal lives. It's Kibar. Kibar. God's got it taken care of. Kibar. So, Wanda, when you've, you've heard Perry share this before, obviously, you know, he breaks it out and then you're there and you're interacting with him. I only got one minute, but what's the big takeaway for you that you want the audience to get on this oh, revelation? Wow. <laughs> well, since you asked, I don't really have an answer. I mean, it's just so rich. I, I think about, when you were in the first segment, I was sitting over there and you were talking about the camel. I, I, I believe it was a spirit. I really felt like, you know, camels drink a lot of water. Average is about 30 gallons. They can drink up to 50 gallons. And it hit me, because the water is the word, right? I believe we're stepping into a phase, a season, where we are going to be heavy with his word, meaning his knowledge, his wisdom. I love that. The whole thing that his word encompasses, we are going to be full of it, rich. And there's going to be a giving out. I heard the other day um, that you don't fully own something until you can give it out, walking in love. Things of that nature. Well, that's so beautiful. Well, listen, I hate to end this program at this point in time, but you, uh, you're you going to have to uh, come back again for the next episode if you want to continue in this conversation. Remember, lancewalnut.com forward slash partner. Work with us. Join us in this endeavor. We are going to be doing a meeting at the Hertz Arena. We've signed the papers. We're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into soul winning and, uh, and bringing out the churches in unity and reaching out as a, as a new kind of political activism, which is the kingdom of God in action, bringing people out to hear the gospel. LanceWallet.com forward slash partner. You can help us preach the gospel. And uh, thank you, Perry, and thank you, Juan, for being part of this program. God bless you. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends, because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world. It's an interesting thing, but you do connect with the grace that is on a ministry when you partner with it. And I want to ask you to partner with me right now, partner with our ministry so that we can do the work we're called to do. I've got a building I'm looking to get, uh, move out and expand in so that we can have you come visit us. We're doing these broadcasts. I really would love to be around our people. So would you go to lancewellnot.com forward slash partner and partner with us. And I believe the grace and the gift that is here in this ministry is actually multiplying in you and increasing in you. As you connect with us and we connect with you, we're going to be connecting with a greater grace. LanceWalnut.com forward slash partner. And uh, I thank you for your friendship, for your prayers, and for your generosity to help us do this work.